Hey guys, to help around the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. The goal is to be transparent and unbiased. This is not an endorsement. It's a privilege to serve you. Let's get into it. Hey, what's going on guys? So I am here with the Unero Bapt all-wheel drive. Pretty cool, because it's got all-wheel drive. <laughs> so I'm actually checking out this bike along with the other one, the Fat HD, which is the uh, Buffang 1000 watt mid-drive motor. This one has two motors. It's got one on the front wheel, one on the back wheel. So let's go ahead and check it out. So uh, what we've got here is a bike that has a lot of really cool accessories for commuting, which is a rather interesting choice uh, given the rest of the equipment. Uh, so it's a fat tire bike. So it has 26 by four tires. That's a four inch width on a tire. Something like that is really good for loose terrain. That's why I brought it here instead of on the road is because it does better in snow, sand, or maybe even some loose mud. Uh, it does pretty good. Uh, that's kind of what these fat tires are for. They're very interesting when you go to steer. Uh, they kind of have a learning curve when you're on the road, but nothing you can overcome. But they can access a lot of new areas and even seasons that other bikes couldn't. So that's kind of a, a little recap on fat tires and what's good about them. Anyways, it comes, these 26 by four inch tires are, are on this rim here with the punch outs. These punch outs are for weight, uh, which is kind of nice. 13 gauge spokes going into the Boom, the front motor. We'll get to the motor, I promise. I wanna go over the mechanical details so we can get to the exciting stuff in a minute. But, uh, so you have the spokes, um, the 13 gauge spokes going into the wheel, I mentioned that. Uh, the mechanical disc brakes are Pro Max 310. Now they work okay when they're tuned. You know, when they get out of tune, they're not all that fun. But one advantage towards having a mechanical disc brake is that they're pretty easy to fix. I actually prefer mechanical disc brake if it were me because I can fix them very easily. Whereas with the hydraulic ones, you kind of got to go through a little bit of extra. Hydraulic are awesome. They're really awesome. They last a very long time, but I don't know. I kind of like to fiddle with things every now and again. Uh, other great equipment that you have on this bike is the metal fenders. Uh, so the, by the way, the brakes are on the front and on the rear are the same on this 160 millimeter rotor uh, that you have the same size. So. The metal fenders, like I said, are one of my favorite features for this bike. It's a, like I said, it's kind of a strange choice to have on a fat tire bike, because usually with a fat tire bike, they're kind of tailored for off-road or even hunting in some cases, uh, which this bike is totally capable of doing, especially with the two motors. It can access a lot of, uh, a lot of different terrain that another electric bike would kind of get stuck in. So it's capable, but having the commuting accessories on there kind of it kind of speaks to me <laughs> because that's what I would do if I had this bike. I don't know if I'd really go hunting all that often, but I totally would use this in the snow commuting in Salt Lake City. So these accessories are something that's kind of near and dear to my heart, <laughs> if you want to call it that. But the fenders are made of metal and I like that a lot. That's my preference to have metal fenders and they are painted, you know, with the rest of the bike black. Hope you like black because that's the color it comes in. Uh, also on this bike, you have the the rear rack, which is great because you can mount panniers on the tippy top or on the pannier rail here, depending on what size of bags you have. It can fit quite a few different ones, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, the, the rear light, this rear light actually, even though it's totally looks aftermarket, this came with the bicycle. Uh, so that's kind of neat. I have it mounted back here. Originally it came on the seat post, um, but I mounted it back here because that makes sense. <laughs> so it comes with a battery inside, you know, has a flashing or a steady or off, of course. I mean, it's not the best option. You know, if you have an integrated light where the lights kind of come in from the main battery and then go all the way back here, that's of course uh, a really nice feature, but it is kind of neat that they include a light at all. You know, I've seen many of them that have only a front light or no lights at all, but so yeah, this, this is a rather, rather uh, interesting choice. Uh, so the rack is fairly wide. So you wouldn't be able to fit like road panniers on here if you have the double sided, but you could get the single side on either one. It's got the little lever for the gloves, I suppose. So moving up to the front of the bike, you have the seat post, which has a pretty good um, suspension system in the seat post itself. Uh, so with this seat post, it kind of compresses a little bit. This is a cover that kind of hides the hydraulics that are inside of this. Um, which is nice because it adds a little bit of cushion. This bike is stiff otherwise. It doesn't have a suspension on the rear, doesn't have a suspension on the front, 
So your hands are kind of taking a little bit of beating if you're on some really rough areas. And if you likewise had a solid seat post, you'd be in the same boat. But this one does have a suspension seat post that kind of compresses a bit. Urgh. See if I can get it going. It, of course, it's pretty stiff because it has to deal with the weight of a full-size rider. And as strong as I think I am, I'm probably not enough to compress it all the way <laughs> with my arms. So, you do have kind of a low step here. This angle is pretty popular on a lot of mountain bikes especially, where you have it kind of come down and then it angles in rather than just a straight bar from a higher position. So this gives you a fairly low standover height when you're standing over the bike, which is nice, but still gives you a lot of options because you can put it in a low, you can put the seat in a lower position and have a more relaxed kind of ride, say if you're doing some lightweight commuting, or you can kind of raise it up all the way. Let's see. Or you can raise it up and still have a fairly low standover height, raise it up and put the body position a little more forward if you wanted to. Uh, so down here you also have the 170 millimeter cranks uh, with a metal Wilgo pe pedal with the reflectors built into them. Pretty standard issue. Uh, this bike does include a uh, kickstand right here in the middle of the bike. Um, which is, you know, pretty nice. It's an adjustable kickstand. So if you have um, some other considerations, if you want to put it somewhere, you can adjust that too on the fly. Uh, you also have the 48 volt, 10 amp hour lithium ion battery that is packaged in here with a locking mechanism. So of course you put the key in there to twist it out, remove the battery and off you go. Battery also does include a power switch on it uh, to see the battery level wherever you're at. And we'll get more into the electric system in a bit. The chain ring up front has a 46 teeth on it. I counted them myself. <laughs> kind of has a larger chain or a larger tooth count so that you can get a little bit of extra torque uh, when you're using the seven speed um, gearing back here. Does have a Shimano Altus for the derailleur as well as up front on the indexer. Um, has a little trigger and a thumb indexer. You also can see the cadence based pedal assist is right here behind the cranks. So you got the magnets back there. I didn't count, but I'm gonna say, what is that? About 12 magnets or so right here on this disc. So that's what enables you to get the pedal assist that gets the electric system moving as you pedal. And again, more detail in a minute. Coming up to the cockpit area, you do have a fairly basic set of brakes. These are some Wuxing brand brakes that have an electric cutoff signal inside of the housing here. So that means that when you pull on the brakes, there's actually a little electric uh, system in here that gets disconnected as you pull it and that will send a signal to the motor to stop giving any power so that you're never you know battling the two one against the other brakes and motor also up front uh, you have a brake on the opposite side some pretty simple grips these are kind of like some grips that are kind of textured on there with a little bit of tension that's about it nothing too terribly fancy uh, but you do have uh, this light so this light right here uh, is wired into the main battery pack uh, through this um, little wire loom here. And that's pretty nice. It does have a integrated front headlight, so you do get that. The fork itself is an aluminum fork and it's wider to accommodate the extra width of the tires, but it is solid, you know, and that's okay because when you have a bike like this, it's really, <laughs> really a very interesting uh, experience when you're already putting the motor through it. So that might be, something else to consider. You do have a solid fork up front, but that's likely in response to having a motor in the front. I'm not entirely sure. I, I'm not a designer of electric bikes, but I presume that having a motor and having the propulsion system up in the front of the bike would kind of complicate things. So I'm sure that's probably why they chose to have a solid fork is to kind of keep things simple. And you know what, it's okay. Given the lower riding position, you can kind of relax your body a little bit and take less stress off of putting your hands on the pedals. So I think it's it's a good choice is my guess. Okay, so that's the mechanical system. Let's talk about the electric system, <laughs> my favorite part. All right, so some of the basics, we kind of mentioned the 48 volt, 10 amp hour battery right here with the locking mechanism. That's pretty cool. Got your pedal assist down here in the bottom bracket area with the cadence based pedal assist that counts how many rotations the crank is moving and gives out the assistance based on that information and you have a fairly basic display uh, i was uh kind of surprised to see it um, but the display has some simple leds uh your assist mode one two or three that also is in tune with a throttle so your assistance will go so high when you have it in number one 
Also, your throttle will only go so high when you have it in level one. When you press level two, then your pedal assist and your throttle have a higher limitation. And likewise with level three. This is a class two electric bicycle because it goes up to 20 miles an hour and it has the presence of a throttle. Uh, but with this basic display, you have a small button to get the headlight going, uh, which is cute. Uh, also, your power level is shown on four bars right here. You can tell I've been kind of riding it around a little bit because <laughs> it's got red, yellow, and then two green bars, and I have exhausted some of them. <laughs> I've had some fun. Uh, and on this side, you have the motor selector. So this rocker switch has three positions. It has middle, and it has left, and it has right. Each one of those serves a function to select the motor. So when you have it in the far right position, that will move only the front motor. When you have it in the far left position, that will move only the back motor. And as you can imagine, right in the middle, you get both motors at the same time. That is for pedal assist and it is also for throttle. So why don't I keep it here and we'll see if I can dance a little bit and show you both of those going. See, I'll back up and do a little bit of uh, acrobatics here. Make sure I got an assist mode, got some semblance of a break. There we go. <laughs> I'll put some footage of me playing around with this when I'm not holding a camera and it should look should look pretty cool. I'm excited for it. <laughs> One other thing to mention is that I'm here in Las Vegas, Nevada. That's where Unirow has their USA warehouse for these bikes. So even though it's a Chinese company, it does ship out from America and they have support here for battery reconstruction if you need it, but battery support as well as motor support right here. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, that's a nice thing. Uh, when they do ship out from here, it comes in two boxes, which is kind of strange. Uh, when I pulled this bike out, it, the box was in a box. <laughs> so I guess it's, it, it's pretty nice because then, you know, it protects it, keeps it uh, nice and clean, but you know, it's definitely new. Yeah, uh, enough of that. Let's just jump on, show you how it does. Okay, so uh, I know that I just said that, uh, that these do very well when you're off-road, uh, but right now when you're on the road, I can kind of highlight a little bit of the difference that you feel when you turn the different motors on and off. And that's one thing that I have not encountered before with a dual motor bike. I've probably ridden like, I don't know, like five dual motor electric bikes. And with them, uh, this is the first one that I've seen that has an active motor selector where you can, while you're riding the bike, while you're pedaling, while you're powering, you can switch the mode from front, rear, or both. And that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, all the other ones that I've tried, you got to stop the bike, get off, go goof around with the settings and everything to try to get it going again. And that kind of having to stop and get off the bike and kind of reset yourself while you're doing that is kind of difficult because you don't have that immediate difference with um, with switching out the motor. Uh, whereas on this one, when you s just use your thumb to switch the motor position, then <laughs> you can feel the difference like immediately. Uh, so for example, um, let's see, I'll put it in the front. So when you, when you have it in the front, it feels kind of, I don't know, like lumbering, I guess I would say, when you only have the front motor on. Like it's still an electric bike and it still gets going, but it just doesn't feel like it has a whole lot of guts to it. When you switch it to the rear motor only, uh, like I did just now, uh, then it picks up a little bit more predictable. It's still a heavy bike, especially with the weight of the additional motor up front. You still feel like you're almost on a cargo bike or something, uh, but that's only using one motor at a time, which would be really handy if you're doing something very technical. Say, if you like to go off-road riding anyway, like in a Jeep Wrangler or something, this, I, could, I could imagine this being like a, a good complement for that. <laughs> but. When you're only using one motor at a time, it's really not not utilizing the system. So when you have it in the middle selector and then you get going, you really feel it pick up. There's a, a big difference. It feels more like this big heavy bicycle has, um, it's almost like it has a, a better system in it. You know, It uh, definitely balances it out. It doesn't feel like you're really slugging to push something or really um, putting a lot of force into pushing it or pulling it. Um, so yeah, I, I think the dual motor setup is, it's a lot more highlighted when you're able to select back and forth, especially on the road, because on the road, it's a good place to test it uh, for kind of what to look for and what to feel for. I wish I had more time to take this on a really serious off-road, take it up to Salt Lake where it's all muddy and snowy right now. You know, that'd be nice. <laughs> Not like here. Not like here. I mean, it's nice here, but for a different reason. Anyways, 
Uh, let's see if I can take it onto that gravelly patch again and I'll show you the motors kicking in and we'll see how that goes. Hey guys, uh, thanks for checking out the review of the fat all-wheel drive uh, from Unirro. If you want to check out this bike as well as their 1000 watt mid-drive uh, model, the Fat HD, uh, you can see that as well as the full specs for this on electricbikereview.com if you haven't been there already. Uh, also, you can participate in the forums for uh, this bike as well as every other brand and bike that we've covered. I'll see you guys there and ride safe.